Hey students, just wanted to give you a little overview on what you need to do for the science notebook for this week in case you weren't in class. So this is week, investigation one, week three for the week of October 5th through October 11th. And this is our FOSWeb class login. It's always the same. What are we learning about this week? We're still learning, we're still in investigation one. So we're learning how to define an organism and we're learning about the needs and functions that all living things have in common or also known as the characteristics of all life. Here are the definitions that we did in class on Zoom and we came up with some examples together. So if you are not on Zoom, you need to probably pause the video now so that you can record these in your science notebook. Dormant, a thing that's not actively doing the characteristics of life, um, but could again, like a seed, yeast, brine shrimp eggs, this thing might look dead or it might look like a non-living substance, but it's actually just dormant and it's considered a living thing. A living thing is a thing that does all of the characteristics of life at some point in its life cycle. So uh, it consumes nutrients, it needs water, it does gas exchange, it excretes waste. Um, So think about like an apple. An apple would still be considered a living thing, even though it's not currently growing. It's not currently, I don't know, doing gas exchange, but it's part of the life cycle of the apple tree. It grows on an apple tree. It should be considered a living thing. A non-living thing would be something that was never living. So never did it do all the characteristics of life. It doesn't have a life cycle. Think like a rock. The kids came up with these examples in class. Classic Lego, a phone, cockies, rocks. Things that are dead once did all the characteristics of life and they won't ever do them all again. Example, a deer hit by a car, a squashed bug, a fallen tree. Oh, my hair is kind of a mess. Sorry about that, okay. Um, so then we did this treasure hunt thing where kids found one of each. So kids went out and found something that was dormant. You could even look in your home for this, uh, something that was living, something that was non-living, and something that was dead. So this was kind of interesting. You, didn't have, you don't have to write down all of these. Really what you should do is try to find something in your home or outside of your home or apartment. Take a look for a seed of some kind, um, an acorn for a living. A lot of people in our class had little babies at home. I think we have a lot of younger siblings or relatives that were there uh, during our Zoom call. So we saw a lot of babies. It was really cool. Uh, many people have plants in their home that they showed us. Even somebody had a living rock, which was a plant. And that was interesting. We saw a lot of cats. We saw a snail. We saw some frozen peas <laughs> and an apple. Those are awesome. Some non-living examples, Halloween decoration, a controller, a phone, a purse, an apple pen, a rock, a battery. And then some dead examples, a dead leaf, uh, people had dead flowers, and someone had saxophone reeds, which are made out of wood. So that was a cool example of something that was dead. So try to find something in your home or outside of your home. The next thing that you need to do is you need to read the Characteristics of Life article. And so if you go onto FOSS Web, here's the ebook. If you click on that blue link, you get to the ebook. You see the doggy. This is the article. You're just supposed to read this one article. There's a few pages. It talks about the characteristics of all life, what's an organism, what do organisms do. Okay, it's not very long. And the other thing that I recommend is you don't have to listen to the audiobook, but it's kind of nice to have it read to you. So if you go to click on that, you'll have to log in, Ms. Troyer Science 105. Remember to click Remember Me. And the info is at the top of your science notebook. Then you can have it play the article for you. Just remember that we're only reading the Characteristics of Life on Earth article. 
don't read past that or listen past that. It's eight minutes. So if you find yourself reading and you're 10 minutes in and you're hearing about the microscope, you've gone too far. Okay, you can have it read to you while you follow along in the article. It's a really good way to do it because it gives you the definitions in bold. These usually correspond to the questions that I'm asking you in your science notebook. So if you have it read to you and then you read along, that's a really nice combination. So you have to have two tabs open so that you can play, hit play and have it start reading to you and then go back to the article and read along. So you're answering these questions. What's an organism? What are the eight needs and functions all living things or of all living things or the characteristics of life? That's in the article. How is this list different from your class list of characteristics of life? What's the same? To see your, your class list, you might not remember. So I would go to week one on Schoology and look at the living non-living debate. Why do you think movement is not considered a characteristic of life? This is the final step, living non-living card sort on FOSWeb. Click the blue link. Here you're gonna move these cards around to make three categories. Which of the cards are living, which are non-living, and which can you not decide about? I recommend when you're doing this to start from the bottom so that I can see the words. That's really important. So amoeba, apple, baby, these things are living. Blue cheese is a little debatable, and this is one of the ones we've debated in class. It's made with the help of mold, so you might say living, you might say non-living, you might say undecided, you get to decide. You can create two columns. So if you think it's living, you can create a second column here to give yourself more space. But it's really nice for me to be able to see the words. Otherwise, I have no idea what you put where. Okay? When you're all done, you're going to take a screenshot. The way to take a screenshot is to do Control Shift and then the little multiple windows key, which is right by the six. So it looks like this. Control shift and then these little windows. Um, that takes a screenshot of what you're looking at and it'll save it to your drive. So when you hit those keys, control shift just takes a full screenshot. Well, for me, that took a full screenshot. Control shift, I think what it'll do, it'll have you draw a rectangle around the thing you want to screenshot. So in my screenshot, my little cute face is going to be in there. But I had to draw that rectangle around the area that I wanted to screenshot. And now that I have it, I, I'm going to pretend like I was actually finished with my card sort before I did that. I'm going to go to Insert, Image, Upload. And if I just go to Recents because I'm lazy, it'll be the last thing that I did. Okay. And now my beautiful screenshot with my face is in there. Super. And if you've done all the steps, it's time to submit it on Schoology. Okay, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm here to help you. Uh, send me an email this weekend. Try to submit this by Sunday. Do as best you can. If you do have issues, I understand that some of this technology troubleshooting can be tricky. Do as best you can. Um, it's better to submit your notebook half done than to never submit it and get a zero and get overwhelmed because you're behind. So sometimes it's better to just submit it halfway done. Uh, I don't think it's best to submit it zero done because you're still going to get a zero. So um, with that said, good luck. Let me know if you have questions. Okay, bye.